Welcome to our study of Amos. Remember that this is divine prophetic information for divine transformation into the image of Jesus Christ. Amos prophesied that Yahweh would judge the nations and Israel, referring to the 10 northern tribes, but restore and rebuild Israel, referring to all the tribes, through a future remnant. The book is titled after its prophetic author, Amos. The name Amos means a load or burden, which appropriately represents the content of the book. The book contains 16 burdens of judgment and one section that provides a blessing. This Amos should not be confused with Amos, the father of Isaiah. Amos lived in the town of Tekoa, which was five miles southeast of Bethlehem. He was not a prophet by family tradition, but rather a herdsman of sheep, cattle, and a grower of sycamore trees. Amos experienced the distress of Yahweh's judgment as the drought had brought hard times on both his flocks and his fields. He ministered primarily to the 10 northern tribes of Israel, but also prophesied to Judah and the nations that surrounded Israel. He would have traveled approximately 25 miles north through the mountainous hills of Judea to deliver his prophecies at Bethel. He was a man of strong spiritual character, as evidenced by his ability to stand up to King Jehoram and the chief priest Amaziah. Amos evidenced a great knowledge of the Mosaic law, even though he had not been taught in the school of the prophets. The introduction to Amos gives us a precise dating of his prophecy. He places his prophecy in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. King Jeroboam II of Israel reigned from 782 to 753 BC, and King Uzziah of Judah reigned from 767 to 739 BC. This would set the parameters for Amos's ministry between 767 and 753 BC. The earthquake that is mentioned by Amos must have been a very severe one because it is also mentioned by Zechariah some 200 years later after the exile. Amos 6, 2 and 13 indicate that he prophesied after the territorial gains of Jeroboam were accomplished. This may suggest that the date was towards the middle to latter part of Jeroboam's reign, placing the date near 760 BC. Amos was probably written during the transitional period of Uzziah, when he moved from his good reign to a time in which he forsook the ways of Yahweh. Uzziah was made king in Judah when he was 16 years old. He did right in the sight of the Lord in his early years, and therefore God prospered him. God gave him military victories over the Philistines, the Arabians, the Ammonites, and other enemies. Uzziah was enabled to extend the borders of Judah and provide security for the people. In his later years, he became proud and acted corruptly. He was unfaithful to the Lord and violated the law by entering the temple and burning incense on the altar. God judged him by plaguing him with leprosy until the day of his death. Jeroboam was typical of all of the kings of the northern Israel, the ten northern tribes, in that he did evil in the sight of the Lord and continued in the sins of his forefathers. This was a period when Israel was in support of Assyria and therefore came under attack by anti-Assyrian forces from the Syria-Palestinian alliance. Yahweh was gracious to Israel during the reign of Jeroboam because they were under severe affliction. Yahweh honored his covenant to the people despite their idolatrous leadership under Jeroboam. Amos, a master shepherd, was very aware of the plight of his fellow shepherds due to the drought on the land. Yahweh's judgment included the withholding of rain. The land of Palestine from the summit of Carmel in the north to the pasture lands of Dekoa in the south was parched from intense heat and drought. Shepherds had to protect their flock from the roar of the lion. 
but now Yahweh roars in judgment and brings devastation on the land due to Israel's sins. The Lord roared in judgment from Jerusalem, his holy city, because of the idolatrous worship that had been established in Bethel, Gilgal, and Dan. The first recipients were Jews living in northern Israel, the ten northern tribes, during a time of great social injustice and international turmoil. There were three major groups that Amos addressed. The first group was the surrounding nations who had violated the Abrahamic covenant by persecuting Israel. God promised that he would curse the one who cursed Abraham's seed. And so these prophetic judgments fell on the nations who transgressed his covenant with Israel. These messages would have brought comfort to the Jews since God was going to avenge their enemies. The second group was the poor, the needy, the afflicted, and the persecuted, who were being oppressed by the affluent of Israel and the surrounding nations. These people were living in a society that was filled with social injustice. There were corrupt merchants, judges, rulers, and priests. The rich oppressed the destitute and extorted what little the poor possessed. The third group was the affluent of society, the upper class who oppressed the poor. Amos condemned their wicked behavior and idolatrous practices and calls them to repent. The major argument for Amos is that Yahweh will judge the nations who persecute Israel and judge Israel for its idolatry, but restore and rebuild Israel through a future remnant. A major purpose was to encourage Israel to humble herself in national repentance so that Yahweh could deliver them from the oppression of their sin and enemies and restore the nation through a godly remnant. A key passage is Amos chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. It states, Hear this word which the Lord has spoken against you, sons of Israel, against the entire family which he brought up from the land of Egypt. You only have I chosen among the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Some major themes are transgressions, useless worship and idolatry, retributive justice, the remnant restoration, material prosperity, and you will discover more as you read through Amos. An outline of Amos should be developed around the 16 burdens and the one blessing that are contained in the book. First, Amos receives visions concerning Israel's imminent judgment by Yahweh. Second, Yahweh will judge the nations of the earth because they persecuted Israel. This section contains at least six judgments on six nations. Yahweh will judge Judah because they rejected the law of the Lord. Yahweh will judge Israel because of their slave trade, immorality, and extortion of the poor. Israel depreciated God's goodness and impeded the spiritual life of the nation. Third, Yahweh will judge Israel because of her idolatry, pride, deceitfulness, and rejection of him. Yahweh will judge Israel because they have rejected the warning of his prophets. Yahweh will punish the affluent women of Samaria because they oppress the poor. Yahweh exhorts Israel that they must trust not in their own strength, but trust in him. Yahweh rejects their sacrifices and their festivals and demands justice and righteousness. The affluent people of Israel will go into captivity at the head of the exiles. Fourth, Yahweh will spare a remnant of Israel through his judgment. He will destroy the idolatry that exists in their midst. Fifth, Yahweh will judge Amaziah for hindering Amos's ministry. Now let's read Amos from the perspective of an original recipient. You have lived during a period of great prosperity and peace in the land of Israel. There has been stability, expansion, wealth, and social freedom. Many people have moved up to the wealthy class and built for themselves extensive homes and estates. At the same time, it seems that the poor have become poor, downtrodden. The rich have oppressed and even extorted the poor to increase their own fortunes. 
Your country has dominated the neighboring enemies and your borders have been secure. Many religions have flourished, including the cult of Baal, which has dominated Israel in the north. The cult of Baal has brought temple prostitution, immorality, social injustice, and the degradation of the social structure of the land. There has been a slow erosion of the spiritual and social conscience of the nation, and now the attrition is impacting the future of the nation. The prophet Amos is calling the people to repent of their idolatry and social injustice. You must consider your ways in light of his word, his prediction about the coming judgment. You have been happy with wealth and affluence, but your soul has experienced a lack of joy and it is in a state of poverty. Your affluence has come at the expense of privation of others. You know that you have compromised your spiritual life by associating and participating in idolatrous festivals. You must evaluate your lifestyle and understand that Yahweh's judgment will fall righteously and completely on those who disobey his word. As you read the message of Amos, it is ominous, it is even depressing. You read of Yahweh's holy and righteous judgments while you hope that it will end with a message of hope for the nations, for your country, for your people, because Yahweh's messianic deliverer will come, will return and establish his kingdom and restore his people.